uh, we're here to talk about uh, a bill uh, that's part of actually a, a larger package of bills in the State Assembly uh, that I introduced last year. Uh, it was called Autism Action New York. It's an initiative uh, designed to support those with autism spectrum disorder uh, from childhood all the way through adulthood. And that includes, uh, that includes educational opportunities, workplace opportunities, uh, and a lot of other things, uh, supportive housing, uh, but it also involves, uh, involves uh, those with autism engaging the community much, much more than they have in the past. Uh, I always mention this number, according to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, one in 68 children are born with autism in the United States each year. And actually more than 3.5 million Americans are living with an autism spectrum disorder. That's quite a big number. Um, and uh, uh, this year we're advancing some new bills in the Autism Action Package. Uh, and the bill we're going to talk about today is one of those bills. Uh, those that have been diagnosed, as I said, are engaging the community more and more. But my son Michael, he was diagnosed at three. He's 15 now. Uh, I always bring this picture along, so I'm just going to... I'm just going to show his, uh, his picture. And we, we as parents, my wife, my wife Jennifer and I, have discovered that uh, you know, the challenges become greater as the kids become teenagers. And, th and they become even greater as they become adults and begin to engage the community. And uh, that's what we're here to talk about because as they do that, uh, the people standing behind me and around me, uh, the first responders, law enforcement, are going to see more interactions uh, with those in our community that could have an autism spectrum disorder. So as I said, uh, there's uh, quite a few in our society uh, that, that are living with an autism spectrum disorder. Uh, and this afternoon we're here to talk about a bill uh, that's part of the Autism Action Plan. It's called Autism for First Responders. The bill creates a statewide training program for law enforcement, firefighters, and first responders that's going to establish a uniform policy across the state and best practices for interactions for emergency situations involving those with autism spectrum disorder and also some related disorders that are re related to autism spectrum. Uh, I'm, I'm the chair of the Autism uh, aut uh, Committee on Autism Spectrum Disorder in the State Assembly. Uh, so this bill is going to be coming through our, that committee and the Mental Health Committee and uh, we expect it to move this year. So we expect to see a lot of progress on this bill. As parents of those, and Janine will talk about this, as, Parents, parents that have children with autism spectrum disorder, uh, they worry. Every time that child leaves the house, they worry. They worry whether they're going to school as a child or whether they're an adult and they have a job at some place like Puzzles, they worry every time they leave, they set foot outside that door to get on a school bus or get into a car to go to work. They worry, is there going to be an emergency situation where he can't respond? Uh, is there going to be uh, an encounter with law enforcement, just a routine traffic stop where he won't know what to say or what to do? Uh, these are the worries, these are the realities uh, for a lot of parents that live with autism, uh, that are affected by autism. Individuals with autism, they struggle to communicate. Sometimes they can't make eye contact. My son has difficulty doing that. They have trouble responding to simple questions, even if it's someone asking their name, which is the first question that someone would ask in an emergency situation. And when, it, when the situation is stressful, when the situation is stressful, it gets even more difficult for them to respond. The Autism for First Responders bill can help teach police officers and first responders to better recognize the signs of autism, of autism, and there are signs, and to react accordingly to minimize their own risk and also those that they are trying to help. So with that, uh, as I said, I'm very pleased to have uh, uh, so many partners here in Schenectady County joining me. Uh, I know Janine has been, uh, has been at, at every single one of my press conferences. There have been quite a few bills uh, in this Autism Action New York pack package. And uh, she says, uh, she has said many times, it's essential that we provide the knowledge to our, to our officers, to our first responders, so they can, they can interact properly with, when, they, when they do have situations involving those with autism spectrum disorder. Uh, so with that, I'm very pleased to, uh, to introduce Janine Crashwag, talk about the bill, uh, and why it's important that we do it statewide and in a uniform manner. So, Jeanine. Uh, as Angelo, uh, Assemblyman Santa Barbara indicated, we have a high number of individuals in our communities with autism, and they really are all over our communities, schools, employment, uh, and we've got to really be very careful about what we're doing and how we're doing it. We've had a very high rate of drowning, wandering, 
victimization and we want to make sure that our community is protected and that we have mutual understanding with first responders. We want to make sure that they are protected as well as our community. So having a consistent uh, uniform training that goes out is incredibly important, especially since the autism community is such a diverse spectrum. We really have to educate. Um, you know, my daughter, who's 29, is very verbal and is driving a car and is out on the road uh, employed. And Assemblyman Santa Barbara's son is nonverbal, so that's the breadth of the spectrum that we are trying to educate first responders about. So it's very important that New York State gets trained in a consistent manner so that no matter who they meet with autism, that they are able to understand it in all of its facets, the different ways that it looks, and the different responses that our community might give. We've had several individuals, uh, we just had a driver's training on practicing um, what to do if you are stopped for a traffic ticket where to put your hands. We don't want a first responder to feel that they're threatened in any way. And so we teach our community as well as we are teaching the first responders so that we are both understanding. We had a lovely game night not too long ago in Albany County with their sheriff's office. And again, plenty of opportunities for first responders to meet our community in casual ways. So the training is both casual and very formal and it's needed on both ends. Our children need to understand that if they see a first responder in a full uniform, including firefighters, that these are people who are there to help them. And we also have a workforce that needs to be protected so that when they are out with their clients or the people that they're helping, that they know that they're protected because there's no misunderstandings of the actions of an adult with autism uh, that could very easily appear threatening, but most likely is not threatening. So we're very happy with all of the legislative bills that the Assemblyman has been providing to us this year. Um, and we hope to see many more from an ID bill to the first responder training bill. These are all critically important to the health and well-being of our community as well as the first responders. So thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Ginny mentioned the ID bill, uh, the autism ID bill, which uh, has passed the state assembly now. Uh, it is uh, moving in the state uh, senate from what I understand. Uh, that's another bill that's going to work with this bill, having that standardized ID card that actually tells you the diagnosis and tells you some of these difficulties. So if someone's unconscious or someone uh, uh, is injured, you can uh, find that card, uh, you can have access to that card and it will tell you the diagnosis and how to respond to that individual. Our Sheriff's Department has adopted the, uh, uh, the Project Lifesaver program, which is great. That's some, that's some of the things we're talking about here too. We're not just talking about traffic stops, we're not just talking about uh, 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 emergencies that happen uh, uh, at work or, or uh, at home, but we're also talking about when kids get lost. Very happy to have our Schenectady County Sheriff, uh, Dominic D'Agostino, to talk more about that and talk about why this bill will be helpful to his department. Sure. Good afternoon. I won't be long up here, I promise. Um, yes, yeah, certainly today we're, we're very happy uh, to, to hear about this legislation that the Assemblyman's putting forward. Any time that we can acquire a set of trainings or skills that enable us to minimize any kind of negative interactions that we may have with our community uh, that we don't need to have is a good thing. And uh, this, I think, uh, being put out, giving us, a, giving us a set of strategies that deal effectively with people that are on an autism spectrum disorder, uh, certainly puts us in a better position minimizing those negative interactions. Um, we think that's important, being able to identify that and differentiating between someone that's non-compliant uh, with someone that is just um, afflicted with this, this disorder. So we, we're we very, very happy to, to have this coming forward. We will be deploying that training as soon as we possibly can, coupled along with the Project Lifesaver program that we, that we already operate. We feel this is a start in being able to effectively deal with a community that's in need of positive interaction with our law enforcement and understanding that there is positive interaction with us and, and not to be afraid of us. So, so we're very, very happy uh, with this legislation coming forward. We thank the Assemblyman for putting this forward and having the foresight to, to keep moving with it. So thank you very much for having us today. Thanks, Don. <laughs> Uh, next, uh, I want to talk about the uh, Schenectady Police Department. Uh, they have actually had some of this training already, uh, which is great. They're doing it ahead of the legislation, uh, and uh, they, this training is just that important. I think the, the chief has recognized that, and that's why he, uh, he already engaged in this training for his officers. 
Uh, please uh, help me welcome uh, please, Police Chief uh, Eric Clifford. Thank you very much. Um, uh, as uh, the Assemblyman said already, um, I'm, I'm of the agreement that this training is very important, so much that we already instituted it. But what I like about the legislation that he's putting forward is that it's going to create a set of uh, uh, best practices that we can all follow and, uh, and, and the, the protocols that are going to be put in place uh, are going to be consistent throughout our community. And it's going to give us the ability to really provide the level of service that's expected in our community. And, and for that, I, I applaud the legislation and I thank the Assemblyman for putting it forward. Thank you. And of course, when we're talking about emergency situations and uh, uh, paramedics, uh, the Schenectady uh, Fire Department has had uh, has many calls throughout the year, and uh, the chances of uh, 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 having interaction with someone on the on, uh, with an autism spectrum disorder uh, increases. In it's increasing every day with the numbers that we just talked about. Uh, very pleased that the Schenectady Fire Department is. Uh, uh, is hosting us here today for this announcement, and uh, I invite up uh, Fire Chief Ray Senecal to speak on the legislation. Thank you. So uh, a little bit different from the uh, law enforcement end, uh, from the fire service, call it paramedic uh, service, if you will, we find it difficult uh, at times to communicate with children, uh, even when it's not an emergency situation. When you add the stress and the trauma involved in, let's say, an accident or a medical emergency, it can become very difficult uh, with those added stresses. So uh, we certainly, uh, from an emergency medical end, strongly support this and look forward to the training that uh, we're able to receive uh, to help us better deal with uh, any emergency situations that come about due to uh, problems with communication. So thank you again to uh, Assembly Senator Marlon. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Mr. Speaker. So uh, as you heard, uh, this legislation basically puts everybody on the same page, gives everybody the same information, uh, gives everybody the opportunity to learn more and more, and we are learning more and more about autism uh, as time goes on. We have better diagnosis, uh, we have uh, better tools, we have better uh, ways to communicate. Uh, each year we're, we're making advances on learning more about it uh, and learning how to interact uh, and even the on the, in the educational setting, uh, incorporating some of these items right in the school uh, and at home. Uh, so there's more and more opportunities, and that's great. There's more and more interaction. This legislation is a big part of that. It's a big part of finding employment opportunities. It's a big part of helping those with autism engage the community on their own terms, being able to do things that everyone else can do, uh, being able to be involved with uh, uh, local organizations, whether it's community service, whether it's, as I said, working at a place like Puzzles, uh, or even spending time, uh, spending time somewhere in a park somewhere, uh, being able to have that interaction, have people trained and understand what it is, what the cues are, uh, what the signals are, uh, I think uh, can go a long way to helping everybody behind me do their job and do it effectively and safely.